Turkey season opens March 7th in South Florida, and we'll be there ready to chase turkeys. We've been getting our gear ready, and we want to show you how. Ooh, that baby will sing. Each year, in addition to practicing our turkey calls, we like to test our gear. This year, we were extra excited because we had some new gear to play with. See, kind of an idea of what it looks like. Strut decoy. First, you have the option to use it as a 2D if you want. And the best part is, it comes with this other attachment. You just put them together with a couple of magnets. That turns in one of the lightest, probably the lightest strut decoy on the market. It can actually be folded up just like that. Now my favorite, this is perfect. Favorite hen decoy I've ever used. I'll show you why. It's 3D. It's got a very versatile head. You can fold it, it's got a little wire through it, you can bend it. So you're hunting and there's a little breeze that catches these little these little cuts. Looks just like a live turkey with feathers flaring up in the wind. You just fold it together, stuff that in your vest. It's lightweight. You're ready for the spring woods. Last year we had a lot of fun putting a Long Beard XR ammo to the test for the first time. Oh, man. Woo, what a difference. We had even better results on some gobblers. Wow. No, you got him. This year, Winchester also added a new version of the Lone Beard XR with slightly more shot, and I was excited to give it a try. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops, also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Scent Master, Dead Downwind, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Whitetail Properties, Blood Sport Arrows, Outdoor Edge Knife, Flatwood Natives, Caldwell. Hooks Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Prime Bows, G5 Broadheads, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. This year, Winchester came out with a Magnum load of the Long Beard XR, and I was really excited to give it a try. I'd used my same old shotgun for more than a decade, so this year I got a brand new Winchester shotgun. I was excited to give it a try, paired up with the new ammo. Last year I tried out Winchester's Lone Beard, took my old turkey gun oh from a gosh. barely 40 yard gun to a surefire 60 yard gun. This year, hard to believe that Winchester tweaked that Lone Beard load a little bit, got the Lone Beard Magnum, looking forward to trying it, plus the new gun, let's see what happens. That looks good. I've done a lot of things outside, but I'm not sure I ever patterned my turkey gun while it was snowing. We're all patterned at 10 yards now. We're aiming right here at a little yellow dot. Great pattern. Backed up to 20. See what happens. Some people wonder why I use a scope on my turkey gun. But the Longbeard XR shoots so tight, it's easy to miss, especially at close range. But the scope allows me to shoot with pinpoint accuracy. That looks good. These are number fours, so it just takes one or two, but it's too mean to count. I don't know how many are right there, and we're centered in the pattern top to bottom. I'm ready to go 30 yards. Gonna try something a little different. Gonna try Winchester's Rooster XR. It's got the same technology as Longbeard, but a little bit lighter load for pheasant hunting. Gonna use it for my daughter Ray, so she's not sitting behind that three inch shell. Fire in the hole. Woo, baby. It's interesting, that pattern's just a little bit right. I'm not gonna change the scope, but Rooster's just a little bit right. Still a dead turkey. The Rooster XR also produced a great pattern with less recoil, and that'd be a real advantage for Ray or other youth who take hunting this year. Last year was my first time to try the long beard, and I was really impressed. But with a slightly new ammo and a new shotgun, I didn't know what to expect. 
but 30 plus number fours at 30 yards and a turkey head, that'll get the job done. Or no. Fifteen number fours at 40 yards. That's not counting these in this part of the neck. Number four, that'll do the job. Man, I'm still looking good. At 50 yards, I changed my aiming point. Instead of putting the scope right where the feathers stop on the neckline, I go up and center the head in the middle of the scope. I know that that shot is going to drop a little bit by 50 yards. Or no. Nine pellets in the kill zone at 50 yards. That's nine number fours. That baby's going in the fryer. I don't plan on shooting a turkey at 60 yards, but while we're here, it's no problem to move the bench back and give it a try. Or no. At 60 yards, I'm not holding high, I'm just centering right here. And it looks to be very true. It's another tagged turkey at 60 yards, so once again, might as well slide the bench on back to 70 yards and see what happens. Or no. Alright, 70 yards. One, two, three, four. Not counting these three right here. Number fours, 70 yard dead turkey. Woo! We're ready to go to South Florida. Get where the snow's not here. It's green. Turkeys are gobbling. Try this stuff out on a real live turkey. Let's get out of the snow, boys. Now to my shotgun's pattern, I'm ready to pack the truck, roll to South Florida, and kick off the 2015 turkey season. Recently, I've been visiting with several neighbors about starting a voluntary deer co-op. A deer co-op is usually just a group of local landowners and hunters that have a common interest in deer hunting and habitat management. I'd casually visited with several hunters in the surrounding area. We decided to be a good idea to form the Branson Deer Co-op. Topics here: whether we want to have a meeting on on food plots, whether we don't have a meeting on on forestry management like timber stand improvement. One of the things I've described on my place for many years: the thing we've done to improve habitat management is all-out war on cedars and fescue. Private landowners have always been the backbone of wildlife conservation here in Missouri and most other states. Missouri is 93% private land. Without conservation on private land, wildlife would really be in jeopardy. And so if you want to do some of the things on your property, then you know instead of you just doing one thing, now you're going to have a seri whole series of landowners working together doing habitat management on all of them. We decided our co-op would be totally voluntary with no dues or fees involved. It's simply a group of landowners sharing information and cooperation to improve the quality of deer and deer hunting for our friends and families to enjoy. There's never been a registered Boone and Crockett in Stone or Taney County. Those are two big, large counties. So if you want bigger deer, we got to back off the trigger. And I'm not telling you what to do on your land, on my land, unless you're my dad, 84 years old, he's got a green card to shoot whatever he wants to. Last thing I want my deer eating is an acorn. They're almost non-digestible. They're about 7% protein and really high in non-digestible fiber. So what goes in tends to go out. Our habitat is forested and forested is low quality. We're low quality habitat. So we're basically high graded forest and, and fescue pasture. Deer don't eat fescue. You see mountain pastures are eating ragweed, a little bit of clover, or whatever. They cannot digest fescue. We can still grow pretty good deer. As deer get older, their gut gets bigger. We'll keep you posted about the progress of the Branson Deer Co-op, and we'll be glad to share our information if you'd like to start a co-op in your neighborhood. If we can let our deer get to four, we'll produce bigger antlers on the exact same diet by far than a two-year-old. So in our situation... There is still snow on the ground and more in the forecast here at the Proving Grounds. Doesn't mean it's not a good time to get outside and enjoy creation. Hope you have a chance to get outside this week and enjoy creation, but most importantly, take time every day and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching GrowingDeer.tv.